I was originally going to do a video on the endings in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator because that game has the most endings, and in my opinion, the best endings. But this is not the only FNAF game with multiple endings. Technically, they all do. There are many interesting endings in the Five Nights series, and since I already put myself through hell by analyzing every single mini-game, I figured analyzing all the endings wouldn't be much worse. Bro, I, I was wrong. This this took this still took so long. Please smash that like button. God save me. A quick disclaimer: by the time this video comes out, security breach will have been out for a few days or even a week. Uh, but this video will be focusing on Five Nights at Freddy's One to Four, Sister Location, Pizzeria Simulator, Ultimate Custom Night, and Help Wanted. One because. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone that hasn't gotten to the end of the game yet, because it is new, I know a lot of people are already like playing it really quickly, but I don't want to spoil it for anyone that wants to watch this video. And two, I've said that I'm not going to make any videos on Security Breach until the new year, because I am giving myself as much time as I see fit until I talk about Security Breach. So although this is more of an analysis than my opinions, I don't want to be talking about Security Breach until next month, when all the hype has sort of calmed down, and I can make a level-headed review, analysis, all that stuff. But also, I'm sure if I added the endings to Security Breach, this video would be even longer, and this video is already going to be quite long. So, without further ado, let's just get into the meat of this video. When you beat Night 5 of the original game, you are presented with your check. There isn't a lot to say about this ending, but we do see the name Mike for the first time, and fans were able to figure out what year the game takes place by comparing the payment to the minimum wage rate from over the years. And when you beat Night 6, you earn some overtime payment. A, a very rewarding 50 cents. This is just a funny ending to end off the sixth bonus night. If you beat the seventh night, you actually get a pink slip with your notice of termination. The reasons provided are tampering with the animatronics, general unprofessionalism, and odor. I'm not sure if this is a joke or if it actually has some canonicity to it. Uh, some believe it does, some believe it doesn't. Uh, it's, it's hard to say. And Five Nights at Freddy's 2 has basically all the same endings, but with a few differences. In the regular ending at the end of the fifth night, we learn that our protagonist is named Jeremy Fitzgerald, and the game takes place in the year 1987. And 1987 is, of course, a very important year in this series, especially at the time. And after beating Night 6, we get our overtime check, like in the first game, but this time we see it on top of a newspaper. The newspaper states that the Freddy's location would be closing after only being open for a few weeks. It goes on to state that the new animatronics we know as the toy animatronics will be scrapped due to possible malfunctions, but the original characters are going to be kept in the hope that a new location will be opened. And lastly, just like in FNAF 1, after beating Night 7, we get a pink slip with our notice of termination. It's of course worth noting that we play as a different character on the seventh night. We know from the phone call on Night 6 that Jeremy was moved to Day Shift. That's why we no longer play as him. Our new character is named Fritz Smith. What I don't really understand is why Fritz gets fired even though the entire location was closing anyway. My guess is that Fazbear Entertainment still hired a night guard for the place, even though they're not in business because they are now aware that something is wrong with the animatronics and they are still at the closed location. But I, I can't be so sure. If you play through Five Nights 3 without accessing the hidden minigames, the end of the game will straight up tell you that this is the bad ending. We see the heads of the five main animatronics, and at least one of their eyes are lit up. To my understanding, this means that the spirits within these animatronics haven't been put to rest and still aren't at peace. The good ending of FNAF 3 can be achieved by accessing a series of minigames throughout each night. I explored this in great detail in my video breaking down the FNAF minigames, so I don't want to spend that much time focusing on the insanely long process. If you complete all the minigames successfully, the final screen will now have four animatronic heads as opposed to five, and there will no longer be any lights in their eyes. If you beat the nightmare mode of FNAF 3, the ending presented is a newspaper that says the Fazbear Frights attraction has burnt down. The paper claims that faulty wiring seems to be the cause, but most believe that the actual cause was either Henry Emily or Michael Afton, attempting to get rid of William Afton forever. Also, if you brighten this image, you can see Springtrap in the background. So if you take the time to deeply analyze the image yourself, this end screen also acts as a way to tell us that Springtrap didn't die in the fire. 
At the end of the fifth night of FNAF 4, we experience the Bite of 83. Our protagonist is being bullied by his brother and his brother's friends because he is afraid of the animatronics. To scare him, they all pick him up together and bring him to the stage where Fredbear is. They place him in Fredbear's mouth, and the child's tears cause the spring locks in the animatronic to fail, and the mouth shuts on him. This was unsurprisingly believed to be the Bite of 87 at the time of the game's release. However, as most of you probably know, there's an Easter egg in one of the minigames with a TV that says 1983. You may be thinking, how does a year attached to a TV show reveal the current year? Wouldn't that just mean that was the year the show was created? Yeah, that would make sense. TV shows don't usually plaster the current year on screen for no reason. But guess what? This is FNAF. After you beat Night 6 of FNAF 4, we get the aftermath of the Night 5 ending. It starts with the older brother apologizing, and the rest is some unknown voice speaking aloud to the child. This voice is believed to be coming from William Afton, who is the crying child's father. This is another one that I discussed in the minigame video, so I don't want to go over the entirety of the dialogue, but the final line is one of the most infamous, <laughs> infamous moments in FNAF history. The child gets told, I will put you back together. We still do not know what that means. The minigame ends with the sound of a flatline, so we know that the crying child does die following the bite of 83. And the last ending from FNAF 4, if you beat the seventh night, you are presented with yet another infamous FNAF moment, the box. The FNAF 4 box is a great chest with two locks that comes with the message, perhaps some things are best left forgotten forever. It is the most vague thing ever. I did a whole video on this thing if you want to check that out, just talking about some popular theories and giving my own theory. The real ending of Sister Location, meaning the canon ending, takes place during and following Night 5. This ending consists of our protagonist, Michael Afton, being lured to the scooping room. In the scooping room, Michael gets his insides scooped out. This is so Ennard, an amalgamation of all the Funtime animatronics, can possess Michael's body to be free. The final scene of this ending is Michael looking at himself in the mirror, revealing his now purple eyes. In Sister Location, there's a secret room that you can access after completing a minigame. If you beat the incredibly difficult night that takes place in this room, when you go home, Ennard will just kind of wobble over to you? I have no idea what this is meant to mean, but it's not a canon ending, so I guess it doesn't really matter. The Custom Knight addition to Sister Location came with its own secrets and bits of lore. After you beat a knight in Sister Location Custom Knight, you're presented with a minigame that consists of Michael walking down the street following the events of Sister Location's real ending. So as time passes, his body decays more and more because of his innards being scooped out. In the final cutscene, Michael's body is fully purple and he walks in a very sluggish way like he's a zombie. He straight up vomits out Ennard into a gutter and collapses. He is then told by Baby that he won't die and he stands back up with a smile. You won't die, you won't die, you won't die, you won't die, you won't, you won't die. If you manage to beat Sister Location's version of 20 mode, you get one of the best cutscenes of the series. This ending is primarily a short monologue from Michael Afton. It's him speaking to his father, telling him that he's going to find him. This scene ends with Springtrap jumping into frame in the burnt down Fazbear Frights location. Just to quickly explain why this is significant, although I'm sure most of you that would watch this would know, Springtrap is William Afton, Michael Afton's father. After he was sealed away in the back room of one of the old Freddy's locations, Michael obviously wouldn't know what happened to him. I assume Michael is imagining talking to his dad in this cutscene, and he tells him what his experience during Sister Location was like, ending it with saying that he'll come find him. We then see where William Afton is, confirming two things. He is 100% still alive, and is 100% the father of Sister Location's protagonist. The monologue is also just pretty cool, and there's some great timing with the sound effect and stuff like that in this, and it has some great music, so I'll leave a link in the description so you can watch the full cutscene if you want. I'm going to come find you. You make a lot of your own decisions in Pizzeria Simulator, the main one being whether or not you'll salvage the old animatronics that are found. If you choose to not salvage them and also don't do anything significant aside from that, you'll be told that you failed your task and the game will end. This is the only ending that doesn't earn you a certificate, and it is easily the worst ending as it literally just consists of you being told that you failed. 
This is one of the funniest endings of any horror game ever. If you don't buy anything at all and end the game with a FAS rating of zero, you get the Certificate of Mediocrity and get a full ending about how you didn't do anything at all. This ending is triggered as soon as your amount of money goes below zero. This can only happen through paying for legal fees as far as I'm aware. You then get your ending explaining to you that you lost all your money. That is all. Getting the insanity ending provides some of the most interesting easter eggs. In order to obtain this ending, you need to buy the Egg Baby Data Archive, and in the office portion of the game, turn off the monitor and then hold down the left mouse button on the bottom left of the monitor. This reveals some hidden blueprints and triggers a recording from Cassette Man, who is Henry Emily. Henry explains that the souls within the animatronics will never really be at rest, and that William, presumably, has become a horrifying monster beyond what he could ever imagine. He also states his plan is to lure them to the location to destroy them all. When this monologue from Henry ends, the ending is immediately triggered. You are provided with a certificate of insanity. It is said that this is what you're given so that way nobody believes you if you say what you heard. This is a really fascinating ending. The blueprints answer some of the most important questions of the game, and Henry's monologue allows the player slash audience to have a small look at how the story affects the characters as actual people. It's also just really funny when Fazbear Entertainment sums it up by just saying, you're insane. Uh, just everyone is gonna know that you're insane. This is another one of the funny endings of Pizzeria Simulator, and in order to get it, you need to finish the last night with a liability risk of 50 or more. In order to get this, you need to purchase the most dangerous items and avoid the ones that provide health and safety. When the game ends, the narrator says that taking risks is necessary, but the player took it too far and was reckless. The player is deemed a liability hazard and is given the blacklisted certificate. This ending consists of a lot of minigames, so I would once again suggest that you check out my video on the minigames, because it would take too long to describe them once again in this video. To achieve this ending, you need to find the secrets within the minigames Midnight Motorist, Fruity Maze, and Security Puppet. If you successfully access these secrets and salvage all of the animatronics, you get this end screen. These gravestones are in the exact same positions as the masks are in FNAF 3's ending. This means that these graves are revealing the names of the spirits within the core 4 animatronics. It is theorized that the two graves with no clear names belong to Charlotte, the puppet, and Cassidy, Golden Freddy. This ending, alongside the gravestone screen, earns you the Lorekeeper ending. Something worth mentioning for anyone that cares about achieving these endings, if you successfully complete all the minigames but don't salvage the animatronics, you will still earn the Lorekeeper certificate, but you won't get the gravestone screen. So if you've already seen this screen 400 million times and you want to obtain the Lorekeeper certificate in an easier way, you can actually throw out the animatronics and still get it. This is the intended and canon ending of Pizzeria Simulator, and it's absolutely amazing so I decided to save it for last of this game, at least. If you leave all the secrets aside and just play through the game normally by managing the pizzeria and salvaging all the animatronics, you'll get the best ending in FNAF history. Baby speaks to you and tells you that you were tricked into bringing them all together. This is what she wanted, and you were just played into helping them. But she's wrong. Henry cuts her off to tell her that she wasn't called here by who she thinks. He addresses the player and says that he planned for there to be a way out for them, but he had a feeling that they wouldn't want to get away. This, I think, is the reason people believe the protagonist to be Michael Afton. Henry also says that he is nearby and doesn't intend on escaping. He tells the animatronics to be still and give up their spirits within them, because they don't belong to them. He says that he believes there is peace waiting for most of them, but one of them, referring to William Afton, will not be at peace like the others saying, The darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole, so don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. What a fucking fantastic line. He addresses his daughter, the puppet, and apologizes to her for not being there the night she was murdered, and acknowledges her giving nature. He says to her, I couldn't save you then, so let me save you now. His closing line is, This ends for all of us. End communication. And the scene ends with a beep. 
We then get our simple wrap up like with all the other endings. We get an apology, a thank you, and a goodbye, and we accept our completion certificate. I can't gush over this ending enough. That's why I was originally going to make this video all about this game and focus on this ending. Henry's monologue is written so perfectly and his voice actor does such an excellent job at arranging the pace and producing vocal inflections at the perfect times. It's a perfect Henry for Henry, saying goodbye to his daughter and repairing his mistakes. It's a perfect ending for Michael, finally knowing his family can't hurt anyone anymore and being able to finally rest himself. It's a perfect ending for Charlotte the Puppet, being freed and finally able to rest after doing everything they can to help others. It's a perfect ending for William, from a story perspective at least, finally being gotten rid of and killed for his actions. It is a perfect ending for this series. It ties up everything in a bow and concludes everything perfectly. But that's not even close to the last fucking ending, so let's move on. Ultimate Custom Night technically doesn't end, but this little cutscene is deemed as the game's ending. If you watch every single weird cutscene throughout the game and get the ridiculous score of 9800, you are presented with this little cutscene. It's the FNAF 1 model of Golden Freddy twitching in the darkness. This is because it's Golden Freddy's spirit that isn't able to let go and rest. She doesn't want to stop tormenting the protagonist, no matter how much pain she's still in. Whether or not this is an ending is up for debate, but I'll briefly go over it. For the record though, this is yet another thing I covered in the minigame video, so forgive me if small bits of information are left out. You play as a Freddy-looking sprite and talk to Old Man Consequences, who is a reference to FNAF World. He says, Come sit with me a while. Leave the demons to his demons. Rest your own soul. There is nothing else. In order for this minigame to end, you have to either close the game or wiggle into the pond and drown to make the game crash. Further contributing to the theory that William Afton is UCN's protagonist and Golden Freddy is the spirit refusing to stop tormenting him, it is believed that Old Man Consequences is talking to Golden Freddy, telling her to rest her own soul. As I said in my video on Help Wanted, I think its ending is fucking amazing. At the end of Help Wanted, you are a child celebrating their birthday at Freddy Fazbear's. There's cake, pizza, and a couple of your animatronic friends. You are then lured by William Afton, and when you follow him, you're suddenly on stage with a microphone. You are in Freddy's place. You are a missing child that has been stuffed into an animatronic suit, and you are now forced to perform as your killer dances to your song. This is just such a dark and twisted ending, and I think it was executed so well, and it just made for a great conclusion. The merge ending is, to my understanding, the canonical ending of Help Wanted, but I, I don't know. <laughs> if you fail to fight off Glitchtrap at the end of the game after collecting all the hidden tapes, he will merge with you and take control of you. This is the bad ending, which is why it's probably the canonical one. For some reason, this is actually the good ending, which shows how little happiness there really is in the FNAF lore. If you succeed at fighting off Glitchtrap at the end of the game, you are suddenly trapped behind a giant door with handprints and scratches on it. If you interact with the slide on the door, it'll open to reveal Glitchtrap. He shushes you, walks into the darkness, and then you're brought back to the main hub with a Glitchtrap plushie. Isn't being punished for succeeding just the most FNAF thing you've ever heard? This is an ending for Help Wanted's Halloween DLC. In the Corn Maze minigame, your goal is to collect a key, but if you collect four keys in total and go back to where you spawned, you'll be able to enter the previously locked basement. Once you do, you'll find a white rabbit mask. Of course, we now know this teased character as Vanny. If you put it on, the screen will fade to black and bring you back to the DLC title screen. You might know that in Help Wanted's mobile port, there aren't any of the hidden tapes like in the other versions, so the mobile came up with a different way to end the game. Another one of the minigames I talked about in my other video is the Princess Quest minigame that was made to replace the tapes in Help Wanted. The minigame consists of lighting torches, and when you light the final torch, a distorted glitch trap will appear and say something too broken to understand. The distorted words have been decoded as, I always come back, let me out, followed by laughter. That is every ending in the main line of FNAF games. Once again, Security Breach was not included for the reasons I gave at the beginning, and spin-offs just couldn't be included. There's no way I'm breaking down all endings of FNAF World. 
I didn't really take into account just how many endings there are in the series when I first came up with this video idea, but it was enjoyable to look back on all these moments of the series. My question to you is, what do you think is the best ending of the series? What game do you think has the best conclusion? Uh, most of them have multiple conclusions, whether it's taking a different path or just beating the bonus knights, but what game do you think provides the best ending, and which one is it? I have to give it to the canonical ending of Pizzeria Simulator, but what do you think? Thank you guys for watching. Please hit the like button and leave a comment, it helps out more than you know. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.